Right. I'm joined today by David Dunn, who is Managing Director of 442 Design. It's a leading design company that challenges the conventions of traditional food, drink and retail spaces to help build forward looking brands and memorable customer engagement experiences. Hello, David. Um, welcome to FC Business Interviews. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Thanks very much for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, let, 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 let's start by find out a little bit, um, obviously, design in, in retail spaces and space within a football club. There's, we're currently in a, in a lockdown at the moment. Uh, there's no football, but when football does resume, we're looking, we're, when it does come back, we're looking at a vastly different world um, post COVID-19. Um, what challenges does that present to clubs? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of uncertainty and unknown at the moment, obviously, around the, 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 the game and when it starts and, and, and how that's going to look for the match, the match day experience. And I think clubs have got a critical role, both in the, the short term and the long term, as to how to respond to that. I think at the moment, football clubs are in a unique position that they, they can be the, the opportunity to create a sense of purpose and, and a real community focus for the towns and cities that they're based in. And therefore, they've got an opportunity and, you know, a, a chance to actually give a little bit of confidence back, give a sense of purpose back to, to local people and manage that in, in a, obviously within the, within the guidance that's available into a way to get people back into connection with both the, with both the, the environment, uh, the outside world, where I'm sure people are keen to get to, but also to, to start to build a bit of a revenue stream which uh, I know clubs will be absolutely desperate for in the short term. And I think there's things that can be done even prior to the matches starting again, where clubs can play a role in that, in that whole sort of, uh, that whole experience. Yeah. And, and obviously going forward, physical distancing at the moment, um, there's a lot of challenges around, around keeping people apart, basically. And one of the things with football is, is that it's, it's built on, on the atmosphere that's generated by fans being close together. And so there's going to be a huge challenge there for clubs. And it seems like physical distances is going to be something that we're going to have to live with for, for quite a while uh, going forward. So how can good design um, mitigate the impact of this within a, within a retail environment? Yeah, I think it's critically important that People have got, you know, comfort and confidence, and and uh, they feel that they're they're in an environment which is, uh, you know, looked at properly when when they do a store. the 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 key to it is to actually get a, a flexible layout and a store design which suits. Um, there's a number of things we can do to create routes and pathways for customers to walk around, and in actual fact, you can add that to your advantage. You can actually get customers to enter a shop and go perhaps to areas of the shop guide them to areas of the shop they wouldn't normally go to. And I think the key thing as well is to ensure that there's regular sanitizer spots, that there's the usual tensor barriers, but take those opportunities to actually start communicating and talking to the, the fans as, as you would expect. And, and it's an opportunity to maybe uh, tell the clubs what they've been up to during, you know, how they've been working in the community during the lockdown, what the players have been up to. There's a lot of really good social media content out there that can be relayed and played in stores to create a bit of a, an environment that's a fun experience. Ultimately, everybody wants an experience in store that is better than the online experience or the experience they can get elsewhere. So I think the, the key thing is that, you know, think about it as per, perhaps a visitor attraction or Disney would where the queuing is actually part of the experience itself. So you can time the queue, you can get people to arrive at certain slots, you can give them a reason to arrive. Every club in the near future is going to be looking at their kit launch, for instance, the new season uh, apparel. And that's an opportunity to combine the online sales with the actual potential visit to, you know, the stadium and do a little bit of a limited, you know, numbered uh, access around the store, which might lead to, to additional revenue. And the ways that we can use the stadium environment to work in our favour, for instance, at the moment, uh, the ticketing areas or the ticketing huts might not be selling tickets so therefore they could be used as a click and collect spot or somewhere that you you buy an online pickup in store and that would be a really good way of repurposing some spaces that they might have in 
in the stadium environment. Car parks, typically most stadium have got large car parks outside. So you've got the opportunity to do things like personalization or shirt printing pop-ups and guide people around outdoors. I think it's just about being a little bit creative about how to use the stadium and the environment as somewhere safe, somewhere within guidelines, but also use that opportunity to, to communicate a little bit about the story of the club and what the club's been doing. And as I said earlier, I think the key thing is here, there's a real uh, opportunity for clubs to take the lead in, in sort of being the, the, you know, to get back in the game, you know, to, so to speak, and, and to get people out and about and, and, and not in, in close contact, but just, just sort of having a focus. And a football club should, and indeed often is, the, the key focus in a community. Yeah. And do you think it's important that storytelling uh, becomes a, a key part of, of this whole process? And, and is it important for those who work within the retail environment at a club, they um, involve themselves with the, the, the people who are driving the PR, the, the marketing, the, the content side? Is, it, is that something that could change going forward? Absolutely. I think there's a huge opportunity for collaboration. I mean, it's the, it's the thing that we're seeing everywhere on social media and all the webinars. And I think, you know, for the partnership guys and the sponsorship guys at the clubs, there's an opportunity here to extend their, their, uh, their, their local contacts. It's probably an opportunity also for, for clubs and stores in particular to set up areas for support networks. There's lots of local, um, you know, agencies and advisors and things like that that could be involved and, and, and new partners that are looking for an outlet and a way to communicate information and, and, and propositions at this time. So there's definitely that side of it. In terms of the, of the actual store design, I mean, every, every story, every club has got its story to tell. Every, every single club has a unique history and unique defining moments. And I think it's about capturing those. And, and what we always do in a store design is trying to enhance those key messages and moments that really catch the emotional, uh, you know, the, the hairs in the back of the neck moments that all the fans relate to and apply those to the, the guiding principles of good retail practice, which are pretty much universal. Um, and we, we know that there's a big difference between a non-match day and a match day environment. And at this moment in time, we're in a non-match day environment. So it's about giving people and giving supporters reasons to visit. And again, around Kit Lodge, the opportunity is there to enhance the, the, the transaction. So if potentially if people are going to click and buy their kit online, they can come to the store to collect it, offer a free stadium tour or offer an opportunity to walk on the pitch or, or do something that isn't going to in any way, you know, risk anybody, but it gives that little bit of an experiential opportunity. It cross sellers sells with the hospitality offer. You've got the chance there. You've got the captive audience. Walk the stadium with them. Just see it as an opportunity to give people a chance to engage and, and see parts of the stadium potentially that they haven't in the past. Now, obviously, all of that is under the within the guidance and observation of 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 what we're what we're going to see everywhere. But I've seen a lot of retailers now coming out of COVID-19 or about to come out of COVID-19 and doing it in a very functional way, which is absolutely right. There's an opportunity to layer that up with a little bit of storytelling and emotional aspect where you start sort of saying, right, I can't wait for this to start again. I'm going to buy the season ticket. I'm going to buy the kit and I'm going to buy also something else or, or get it personalized with a message on it. And again, as I said, you know, it's a chance for clubs to really, up, you know, local support networks and make, make this a, a hub for, for what people are going to be looking for when this all, you know, hopefully comes to an end very soon. And do you think it's a learning process where once all this gets going and we and we start to um, get back to some form of normality, um, the whole the whole process is a new way of um, working and there's a new way of, of shopping and, and and visiting these outlets and, and, and clubs. Is it important that the clubs work with the, the fans that are coming here and they work out what what works best? Yeah, definitely. I think there's an opportunity and, and there should always be a lot of close engagement with the fans. That's no doubt. I mean, a lot of clubs that we work with have got very strong and, and, and supportive uh, kit sponsors and, and, you know, there's a lot of expertise brought in that way. And we're always looking for ways to work with them to create new reasons to visit and new experiences that fans relate to. And I think um, it's all about, you know, dwell time, about getting fans in there, spending more, the longer somebody spends in a store, the longer they're going to potentially, the more they're going to buy, the more they're going to repeat their visit. It's about creating memories, selfie moments, etc. 
And I think, you know, respectful layout and, and local collaborations will lead to a feel-good factor. And that's that really, that really what's there. And there's a chance also to get into kind of untapped local markets. A lot of clubs might, you know, you could argue have been social distancing for a long time, having a look at some of the, <laughs> some of the stadiums. But I think, you know, once we're back to the stage where we've got actual, you know, the park stadiums again, there's an untapped local market out there that you just want, you know, the club has the opportunity to step forward and say, you know, we're the social hub here, we're the, we're the leaders, we can offer advice on nutrition, on health, that's what we're all about. There's so many different aspects and collaborations that can be added in to the retail offer. So it's not just about the kit, it's about that whole experience that goes with it, you know. Yeah. And moving from, from non-match day back to match day, um, yeah. How, how do you create a space that marries the, the two different um, opportunities that a non-match day and a match day uh, provides? How, how, do we, how, do we, how do we combine those or how do we work in the, them in tandem? Yeah, I think, I think that's, a, that's a, a very good point. It's all about flexibility of the store format. Uh, the key to the match day is uh, you know, having that sweet spot, the, the sort of 90 minutes before the game and potentially an hour after the game, the way, where, where you really are going to be mobbed, you're going to sell. The, the, the difference then is often the, the sales are, per head are slightly lower because people are more in a rush, they're, they're kind of the store's busy. It's about uh, trying to translate, be, be ready for that, and that's to do with a, a good flow of or a layout of the store, creating a good uh, adjacencies and destination points around the store, quick speed of service so the sales are going to be quicker now obviously we're moving to pretty much a cashless environment i mean there's no doubt about that so for that from that point of view a clever and slicker repost system that requires no cash touch you know touch points is going to be what it's all about it gives clubs the opportunity to uh, not be encumbered with with cash till drawers and things like that so technically they could be more uh, till points or, or locations where you can pay quickly for things and that's always a better way to drive revenue particularly on a match day on an on an on match day as well you, you want there to be several reasons to hang around the store to have a look into different aspects to to use the multimedia in a in a in a you know in an effective way and nowadays there are loads of loads of different technologies out there which can really enhance and layer up the story i mean i i actually think that We'll see the return of sort of QR codes in a big way. I think they're so cheap and easy to connect and add a layer of content to. So you can really uh, talk about, you know, personalise and talk about a, a product through a simple, you know, QR code that 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 we that kind of came and went a little bit. But I think it's going to be back in in vogue much more in retail. And I think there's things around existing apps that are easy to tap into that are not necessarily going to be expensive for clubs that don't have the infrastructure. But it's about being clever with that and really trying to, to combine the, you know, an interesting, unique story to tell and give people reasons to buy things. And that's really what it's about. I mean, I think the, the danger is at the moment, people are going to be maybe sitting in a lot of stock they've had that they've kind of, obviously there's going to be a lot of old stock. So, you know, bundle up the products that you're looking to sell on and, and uh, you know, look, look at ways of giving real value for money, particularly in store. As I say, it's the idea that we can sort of lift the lid a little bit on the stadium and the experience back to football by having people in a managed way coming back to the store and re-engaging and enjoying the, the, you know, the experience of going back to the stadium. Excellent. That's brilliant. And, and at the moment, there are a lot of football club executives and there's a lot of people who work within football. They, they've got a lot of time in their hands, a lot of time to think, what, what's, your, what, what's your main piece of advice for them now, looking ahead towards the, start, the restart of the season? It might not happen in the next month or two. It might not happen in, in, in June, July, August. But at some point, we're going we're gonna to come back. We're going to be playing football again. We're going to have fans back on the terraces, etc. What's your advice for those football executives now um, to, about thinking forward and, and what they need to do? Yeah, I think we're, it's about turning that into a positive, isn't it? It's, it's that unique situation where we've got a, a, a not normally a lot of our our work in either the sort of hospitality or the retail fit outs is crammed into that closed that closed season, you know, sort of end of season, pre-season to a sort of four week window. And, it, and it's a rush to do things. And there's a kind of, there's very much a kind of first come, first served approach and everybody tries to do it. And I think from, from the point of view at the moment, we have the unique opportunity to plan, to forward plan properly, get things right, take a step back, think about the, the pricing structure that you want to do for maybe, you know, the season tickets, the, 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 the memberships, hospitality offer, retail products. I mean, from our point of view, um, 
a, a project can be anything from a year to six months to a year in planning anyway. And I think what that does is, I mean, realistically, until, you know, I think there's going to be a period of time when the, the, there's going to be less restrictions on the working and on people going back to work, but there will still be restrictions on crowds. Now, let's turn that to the advantage and say, how can we make the, the new era look right for us? How do we reposition and repurpose space, plan it properly, design the spaces so that it feels comfortable when we do go back to, you know, to the football? And, and I think from our point of view, you know, use the time to strategize and plan now, get it right, and therefore we, it can, the results can be better and better value. And I think uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of other highly distressing elements around the whole situation with furloughed staff and all the rest of it, but it will come back and it will come back hopefully bigger than ever. And I think from everyone's point of view, you know, everyone sort of like can't wait till we get there. And I think it's easy to get sidetracked by the negativity here, but, the, but there will be a return. And what we want to do is be ready and to say to people, wow, this is great what the club were doing when, you know, when we were in lockdown or when we weren't, when we were away and it just reinvigorates the whole position. Cause I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty, but the one thing we do know and we can control is what the fixed environment can look like when we come back. An opportunity. I often think that the, the store and the hospitality are the, are the window to the club, to the club's soul. And I think it's really an opportunity that clubs use to, to, to essentially do a branding so, a showcase. It, it's, it's, the, it's the tangible way, other than actually playing for the club, it's the most tangible way of getting, getting close to the club. And, and I think that to join up the opportunities and the P&Ls so that there's a, a hub, a destination that really connects the community, um, I think that's the key to it. We've done some lovely projects with likes of Arsenal and Norwich City and West Ham and, and Fulham and people like that that were really trying to create a reason to visit the store at the stadium or in the city centre. And that's that for me is definitely the right model and, and how it should uh, how it should be in the future.